huh? Where is it? Hey, Joanne. You look so busy, huh? Jim, I'm tired of searching. What? Searching? What are you searching for? Jim, you remember the article I wrote for the school magazine? Yes. I remember I had kept it inside a book, but I can't seem to find it now. But why did you keep that inside a book? It was just two sheets, Jim. That's why I thought I'll keep it inside a book. Oh, then where's it gone now? Exactly. That is what I'm wondering too. I have an idea. Why don't you pray to God once and then search it again? Hmm, that's a good idea. Oh, saint for lost articles? Yes, Jim. The patron saint for lost articles is Saint Antonio of Padua. That's great. Let's pray to Saint Anthony of Padua then. Oh, Saint Anthony, please help us to find the lost articles through your intercession. All right, Joanne. Now let's start searching again. Not here too. Hey, I found it. Look, Jim. I must have searched this book at least ten times, but I couldn't find it. But it's here now. It's a miracle. Ha 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 ha. Good, Good morning, morning, Uncle Francis. Francis. Good morning, children. Uncle, when did you reach? Hmm. I reached some time back. I thought I'd wait till you finished your studies. We are not studying, Uncle. We were searching for an article I had written for the school magazine. And you know what? We prayed to Saint Anthony of Padua, and we found the article immediately. Ha <laughs> ha! That's great. Do you know that he is the patron saint for lost things and people? Yes, Uncle Francis. Joanne knew this, and we just experienced it for real. Uncle, can you tell us the story of Saint Anthony of Padua today? Sure. Then let me tell you the story of Saint Anthony of Padua. Okay, okay Uncle. Uncle. Anthony was born on 15th August 1195 at Lisbon in a wealthy family. His childhood name was Fernando Martins, and he studied at a local Catholic school. When he was 15, he joined a monastery of Saint Vincent. Hello, Fernando. How are you doing in the abbey? I am fine, Father. I am concentrating in studying theology. Son, you. You look so thin. Are you well? I'm all right, mother. Do you know how many times you have visited me this year? Huh? Why do you ask that question? Your dad and I come here every month. I am happy that you are visiting me every month. But I need to be on my own now. I need to concentrate on my studies. So, do you want us not to visit you at all? No, dad. Even my friends come here very often. That's why I have decided to move to Abbey of Santa Cruz in Coimbra. As you like, my son. But you know we will miss you. Fernando then moved to the Abbey on Coimbra and studied theology and Latin. After the ordination, he was in charge of the hospitality of the Abbey. During that period, few Franciscan monks visited Coimbra. Good morning, brethren. Good morning, Father. I have not seen you people around. Where are you coming from? We are the Franciscan monks, and we are traveling around the world preaching gospel. That's wonderful, sir. I am really impressed with your mission. But may I ask why you are looking so worried? Can I help you in any way? Thanks, Father. It's that we have just reached from Morocco. And we were just told that two of our missionaries were killed there. Oh, that's sad news, sir. They were killed for the greater glory of the kingdom of God. May they rest in heaven, Father. Which congregation do you belong? I belong to the canons regular. Father, can you do us a favor? Sure. What is it? Do you think you can help us to get back their bodies from Morocco? Hmm. All right. Let me speak to my superiors. They might be able to help in bringing them back. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Fernando sought the help of the King of Portugal. The King gave an order, 
and the dead bodies of the martyrs were brought to Portugal. The monks were quite pleased with Fernando for what he had done. This incident motivated Fernando to become a Franciscan monk as well. He wanted to preach the gospel and help other people. He got permission from the authorities to join the order. He then changed his name to Antony, and he sailed to Morocco. Antony preached to the people of Morocco for many years. Then he fell sick, and he couldn't preach anymore. Father Antony, you are very ill. It may be difficult for you to stay here. I, I think it will be better if you can travel back to Portugal. You will get better treatment over there. What's happening? I came to Morocco inspired by the great work done by you people, and now, now my health is not letting me go on with the mission. Hmm. But please don't worry. I will not be a cause of concern for you. If it is God's will, I am going back to Portugal. But God had different plans for Father Anthony. While they were sailing towards Portugal, their ship got caught up in a huge storm. The captain had to steer the ship to get out of the storm, and they eventually landed in Sicily instead. Father Anthony took retreat in a rural monastery in Forli due to his ill health. He was spending most of his time in prayers and studies. One day, Father Anthony was attending the ordination of priests. God. Isn't it great to be here with the Franciscan friars during this ordination ceremony? The ordination is about to get over. Who will be delivering the homily? I'm sure that the Franciscan friars will deliver the homily. But let's go and get a confirmation. We don't want any confusions in the last minute. Hello, Father. We wanted to know who will be delivering the homily today. Oh, we thought one among you will be giving the homily. What? No. Since you were here, everyone thought you will give the homily, and none of us prepared. Maybe can you ask your superior to depute a friar to speak? Nobody asked us to do that, and no one among us has prepared to. Oh, what are we going to do now? Then the superior of the monastery called upon Father Anthony to speak. He knew that Father Anthony was a very intelligent and informed person. Father Anthony, please come forward and do the homily. But, but Father Superior, I have not prepared anything for this occasion. Father Anthony, don't worry. Words arise out of wisdom, and I know you have enough of that. Please walk into the pulpit. When Father Anthony started speaking, people were surprised by the knowledge and oratory skills of Father Anthony. It was the Holy Spirit speaking through Father Anthony, and everyone was really excited. And by the time the speech was over, everyone gathered there knew that Father Anthony was indeed blessed by the Lord. Because of his immense knowledge, Father Anthony was made the novice master of the monastery in Bologna. It was an incident which occurred here that made him the patron saint for recovering lost articles. Huh? I can't find it anywhere. Where is the book of Psalms? What happened, Father Anthony? Why do you look so worried? Father, I can't find my book of Psalms. I had written a lot of explanatory notes in that. I have been using this book from my days of Coimbra. I, I can't find it now. Do not worry, Father. It may be lying somewhere here. You will definitely get it back. Most loving Father, I am doing to the best of my capability to teach a gospel to the novices. Human wisdom is not enough to interpret your words, and all the enlightenment you have provided were noted in my book, which is missing now. Please get it back for me, my God. 
It was one of the novices who had taken the book from the father's office. But when Father Anthony started praying, the novice felt a strange kind of fear in his heart. It was like God was making him feel guilty for taking the book he was reading. Huh? Why am I feeling so guilty for taking this book? I think... I think I should keep this back. Huh? Oh, I am so relieved now. After his prayer, Father Antony was pleasantly surprised to see the book lying in his cupboard. Thank you. Thank you, God. The supreme gift of preaching made Father Antony very popular. After attending the general chapter of the congregation, he returned as the provincial superior and eventually settled down at Padua in northern Italy. In 1228, Father Antony served as the envoy to the papal court. Pope Gregory IX was very much impressed with his deep knowledge of the scriptures. Father Antony, I would rather call you the Ark of the Testament. <laughs> Your Holiness, I'm deeply honored by that. But can you please be kind enough to tell me the reason for calling so? Father, you should know this. The sermons you deliver are deep-rooted in knowledge, and the illustrations you do is a great way to learn for others. I'm humbled with your kind words, Your Holiness. Can you give me the collection of your sermons? This can be used as reference for other clergy. I will, Your Holiness. Once Antony had gone to Remini to preach about the Gospel, the people there were very rebellious and were spreading the wrong teachings about the church. Because of this, the people had stopped listening to Christian missionaries. Hello, brother. Can I tell you the good news from God? Huh? Hey, cleric. I have no time to waste. You may better find someone else. Good day, brother. Would you be interested in listening to the Word of God? I have better things to do, my friend. I don't think anybody here would listen to you. You can rather preach to the animals here. <laughs> Father Antony kept speaking to the people, but nobody wanted to listen to him. This really made him upset. Then he went to the outskirts of the town to the banks of the river Merakia. He then started preaching to the fishes fish of the river and sea, listen to the word of God, because the heretics do not wish to hear it. Suddenly there were thousands of fish, all pushing their heads through the surface of the water, straining to hear Antony's words. It was a miracle. <laughs> and when people came to know about this, they crowded at the river bank to see with their own eyes. What? This is a real surprise. Even the fishes are listening to him. Hmm. He's indeed speaking the word of God. I believe in him now. When they saw this extraordinary event, the people of Remini turned from their stubborn ways and returned to the church. Father Antony converted many people to Christianity with his evangelic works. One day, in spite of his sickness, he went for a retreat, and on the way back he fell sick. He was taken to the poor Clare Monastery for treatment, but he couldn't get well, and on 13th June 1231 he died. He was only 35 years old when he left this world. Uncle Francis, I have read that the children in the streets cried and the church bells chimed when the saint died. The legend says so. Another striking fact of his sainthood is that he was canonized within one year of his death, which is a very rare thing in the history of the Catholic Church. Joan, you were also saying about the tongue of the saint. Is it true that the tongue of the saint had not decayed even after 30 years? Yes, Joan. The body of the saint was exhumed after 30 years, and it was observed that his tongue was intact. It was a testimony to the good evangelic work and eloquence he possessed. We are really inspired by the life of St. Anthony, Uncle. We are going to read the Bible daily to gain more knowledge. 
That is an excellent resolution, children. All right, it's time for me to go. See you in the next episode. Goodbye, Uncle.